Pastor Sigler will educate us on what we're going to be doing Saturday. Amen. Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. special guests that we have here on today. Definitely we want to thank our counselors that are here. Amen. Councilman John Burke as well as Jim Holloway here on today. We want to thank Dr. Beverly and IT uh, here in St. Peter. Amen. And definitely uh, she didn't compliment herself but I'm going to say one the cops name. Amen. Amen. for Charles McNeil. Yes, right. And certainly thank you all of our preachers that are here on today. I see several Amen. preachers here uh, that have already spoken as well as in the congregation. Thank you so much. Uh, tonight is very intentional. Uh, in somewhat in the spirit of the civil rights movement, they will have church before they went out in March. Wow. And so therefore, this, this is intentional. And as we call it, a protest service. Right. We've had singing. We've had praying, we've had testifying, and now we're preaching. All right. And we may get ourselves ready for Saturday. 
Uh, but there's uh, two uh, texts two text that comes to mind that I believe uh, helps us with this moment that we are embarking on. Uh, one is from Michael chapter 6, verse 8. It says, He has shown you, O man, what is good. Mm -hmm. And what does the Lord require of you? Mm -hmm. But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Yeah. And then Luke chapter 4, verse 18 says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim liberty to the captives. Uh, for the time we have to share together for just 15 minutes, I want to talk about the time is now. All right. The time is now. I often say in reference to time that God has a unique understanding of time. God's understanding of time is so different from our understanding of time, where we look at time from a chronos perspective, a 24 hours a day viewpoint. God looks at time not in a clock format, but in a purpose format. God looks at time according to God's mandate, God's mission, and God's purpose for humanity. In other words, when God says it's time, when God says that the moment has come, it's usually connected to God's plan to change something, to alter something, to bring about something positive that has been long overdue. Yeah. Uh, when God told Moses it was time, it was connected to God's plan to free the Hebrews from Egyptian captivity. When God told Joshua it was time, it was connected to God's plan to take them over into the promised land. When God gave a prophet a, in scripture a time, it was connected to greater work and change that God was putting into motion. And, then, and surely when God told Jesus it was time, it was connected to change that was about to take place in the heart of humanity. So God's timing is not clock time, but purpose time. And certainly we all are here this evening or watching on Facebook, not because of clock time, not because the time struck 6 p.m., but we are here for a greater time. We are here for a greater purpose. We are here for a greater mission that has already been put in timing by God. That is to declare in Lexington, in Davidson County, in the state of North Carolina, and more specifically to Governor Roy Cooper that the time is now to grant Charles and me a So we can finally come home. The time is now. Yes, Governor Cooper, we send word to Riley from the time clock from heaven that we are not waiting six more months to leave. No, we stand in unity and say that the time is now. For 43 years, since 1979, since 16 years old, Charles has served time unjustly. Longer than I've been alive, as a matter of fact. He has served the prison sentence double the time. Anyone would have served for such a crime, especially someone of a different race. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the time is now. That's the tenor of the scriptures I read in your hearing this evening. Both texts come from the mouth of God, though spoken at different times. However, both speak to an issue and a pointed time that God has set for things to change. God, through the prophet Micah, is speaking to the children of Israel as he is taking note of the social injustice that was occurring. Yeah. God says to them, I have shown you yeah. what is good. I have shown you what is right, what is humane, and what is loving. Therefore, he says, what does the Lord require of you? What is my expectation of you? What is my request of you? I require you, he said, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. I just want to deal with that first part of the request. God says, I expect you to do justice. But watch it, child of God. In order to do justice, you have to first acknowledge the injustice. In order to make something right, you have to first call out the wrong. Listen, can I tell you this? God expects us to call out the wrong. God expects us to see the wrong in our city. God expects us to see the wrong in our city's history. God 
expects us to see the wrong of the racial history of our city and not cover it up as if it didn't happen. But see that any person of color, especially a black boy or man, regardless of the age, who was accused of assaulting a white woman would have found it difficult to get a fair trial and certainly a fair sentence. See the injustice for what it really is. Don't get me wrong. We are not just hard. We're not here to argue the facts of the case of what really happened in 1979. No, regardless of whatever took place, we are here to do what God has required of us, and that is to acknowledge the injustice of a life sentence. The injustice of a black man sentenced to life at age 16 years old, not for murder, not for a man shooting, but for alleged assault. Uh, we're here to do what God has required, that is to acknowledge and call out the injustice of the criminal justice system that has sent many black and brown men and women like Charles to longer or to life in prison for far less intensive crimes than their white counterparts. No, we're not here to be quiet anymore. We've been quiet for 43 years. We've tried to tell us up for 43 years. But now is the time to call it out for what it really is. So to some of our Lexington neighbors who are watching, who's asking the question, why are we bringing up the past? It's because you tried to cover up the past. To so those who are asking, why are we speaking about a bad time in Lexington's history? It's because while you are able to forget it, Charles has been living it every day of his life for the last 43 years. It's because Charles' family has been living with it for the last 43 years. It's because Charles' mother had to die while saying goodbye to her son to a cell, to a prison cell. You may have forgotten about it while others in this house are still living it. Let me be clear. I'm not just talking about the white people. That's right. No, unfortunately, some black people have forgotten this well. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we've right. forgotten about the Emmett Tills. Okay. We've now. forgotten about the Scottsboro Boys. Yeah. Yeah. We've forgotten about the Central Park Five in yeah. New York. We've forgotten about the Daryl Hunts in Winston-Salem. Oh, wow. And sat right here in our own Lexington backyard. We've forgotten about the Charles McNeers. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, I have hope today. I'm almost done. I have hope in the time of this moment. And my hope uh, comes from what was spoken through the lips of Jesus as he read from the prophet Isaiah in Luke chapter 4. For in Luke 4, verse 8, Jesus stood up in a worship service in front of those who gathered in the church house to hear the good news. Jesus stood up and opened the book and read God's words. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to claim liberty to the captives. Can I have eight minutes to break this verse down real quick? Uh, the lad that text says that the spirit of the Lord is upon me. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. For he has anointed us. I want to explain firstly the call in this text. It says, for he, meaning God, has anointed us. The only time, brothers and sisters, you would anoint something or someone is because they were set apart for a service. Meaning they were called to a deed, to a work, to a mission. God has anointed all of us to this work of advocating for Charles. God has called us to speak up for Charles. It's just not the responsibility of a few of us, but it's the responsibility of all of us. But God has orchestrated this moment in time for a work, for a march that he has called all of us to be a part of. God has placed Charles' story in our conscience and in our hearts because it's connected to the call that we all have been given. Uh, Charles' name is not forgotten in this community. No, he's a part 
of this community. Uh, whether you are a family member, a friend, a classmate, a neighbor, a pastor, a community leader, an official, an employee of the city, Charles is a part of all of us. And because he's a part of us, we have a calling to come to his need. We have a calling to advocate for him. We have a calling given by God to speak up for him. God has anointed us. I love it because that word anointed also means gifted. Uh, it means to have access to a resource that can cause things to change. And certainly for the last year, and intentionally for the last few months, people have used their resources. They have used the resource of sending emails to Governor Cooper and making phone calls to officials and writing letters. Some have used their resources of social media and other avenues and platforms. Some have worn their t-shirts around town and spoke at city meetings and county commission meetings, but there is still a call for us to use our resources. Uh, there is still a calling for us to do what we have been gifted to do. For we are the legacy of a people, both black and white people working together. That when we answer the call and use our resources, we cause things to change. Uh, we cause a Confederate symbol and statue to be removed when we answer the call and use our resources. We call Because there's a concern. Right. Notice the text for he has anointed me, anointed us, rather. He has called us uh -huh. to proclaim liberty uh -huh. to the captives. Yeah. Captives is another word for prisoner. Uh -huh. Those who are bound, those uh -huh. who are locked up, those who have been given life sentences. Yeah. Yeah. As, we, as we said earlier, the call is for a set work. In other words, it's for a set problem or concern. Mm -hmm. The call is to concern itself with those who are captive, mm -hmm. with those who have to endure unjust persecution, with those who have to endure unjust prison convictions, with those whose lives have been thrown away or locked away mm -hmm. for an extended period of time with no word or hope mm -hmm. when their release or freedom would come. Jesus, in speaking these words, raises up a concern that has empowered his calling. Right. And for those of you who don't believe that Jesus cares about those who are incarcerated, yeah. those who are in prison, Jesus said in Matthew, for as much as you have done to the least of these, you also have done it unto me. For I was hungry and you did not feed me. I was, clothed, I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and you did pray for me. And yes, I was locked in prison. And you didn't visit me nor did you speak up for me. And as you've done to the captives, he said, you also done it unto me. But because we are called, it also means that we have a concern. Because we are here, it means that we stand in solidarity, lifting our voices to our concern. We stand in unity, lifting our voices to a problem. We stand together, lifting our voices for our brother and our friend, for our community member who can't speak for himself. We stand in Jesus' name as he consented to be the least of these. We stand as Jesus has called us to do. We stand for Charles McNeil. Therefore, may I suggest lastly, I'm done here, that because you have a call, because we have a call, and because we have a concern, then may I suggest that it's time for action. For the text says that he anointed us to proclaim, meaning God has anointed us to action. Uh, he has anointed us to speak up. He has anointed us not to speak out with our fists, but to speak with our feet. Uh, he has anointed us not to speak with a weapon, but to speak with our 
voices here. Yeah. So no to them. Not the speech of the fight, but the speech of the march. Because when we march together, when we speak together, when we stand together, then with one voice we can tell Governor Cooper to do the right thing. I said do the right thing. I said do the right thing. Release cars now. Release cars now. Release cars now. But to stand together and tell Governor Cooper, do the right thing. Right. Release talk. Yeah. Street, 
the Governor's Mansion on Blount Street, but we're going to gather 200 North Blount Street, uh, but we're going to have the rally in the parking lot right next to the Governor's Mansion. So along East Jones Street, there's a big parking lot uh, where you can park your cars. We are, it's our understanding that there's no cost for that parking, uh, so you can park there for free and we will have the rally right there. Um, you bring your lawn chairs if you so desire. I think we have some snacks and water out there uh, for those who may need uh, to eat in between uh, two and five while we're out there. Uh, we'll have the first half of the rally and then we're gonna do one lap one lap around the governor's mansion, um, and then we will have the second half of the rally. So it'll be about three hours or so, uh, but I don't think it will go beyond three hours. Uh, but until then, we ask that you continue, uh, continue to let your voices be heard, continue to send emails, uh, clemency at nc.gov, um, uh, asking Governor Cooper to request uh, to sign a Charles clemency, uh, continue to use your voices, continue to make phone calls. Uh, we've been trying to get a meeting with Governor Cooper at this point. If you get a meeting with him, let us know. We will move our schedule to come meet you in Raleigh somehow. Amen. So, so we ask that you uh, continue to be vigilant, my brothers and sisters. Um, and the reality is that um, if we're hoping that this is a one and done. Amen. But if not, Amen. if not, we got to keep going. Amen. Amen. We got to keep going, and we hope that the same energy and the same spirit that you came today, that you will continue to be with us for the long haul. Yeah. Uh, also, too, uh, uh, this uh, protest has been put on by the advocates for uh, the advocates for Charles B. Mead organization. Uh, it's a official 501c3 organization. Uh, so pretty soon, uh, we'll have a GoFundMe page out there uh, requesting donations because we understand. And when Charles returns, he's going to need help. Amen. 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 He's going to need help transitioning back to uh, regular life. He's going to need some funds, uh, things of that nature. So we're calling on our community to help him, help us help him. Amen. Uh, so uh, soon later that will be up, and we definitely will send that out on social media as well as to our churches and through the newspaper so you can give accordingly. Uh, why did that forget anything? Buses. Yes, uh, we have a few seats, a uh, few a few seats, I think a total of 30, 30 seats, uh, one van and one small bus. Uh, if uh, you need a ride, um, definitely uh, we'll be leaving from St. Stephen at 11 a.m. on Saturday, 11 a.m. on Saturday. So if you need a ride, uh, we encourage you to come to the church. Um, but uh, also we encourage you to also do carpool that before you ride together, y'all can all get there at the same time. Amen. And all of y'all can get five dollars for gas. Amen. Amen. So, so that's an easy way to get to Riley. Everybody pitching five dollars to put in the gas tank. We get there and get back. But if you uh, definitely need a ride, we'll have a van and a bus here. Um, and definitely it's, it's kind of like first come, first serve. Okay? Amen. Is that everything? I would like to say real quick, we have had some lovely teenagers in the community who've come together and made us some signs. We've got a couple banners. We've got uh, some flags. But if you have your own sign and wish to bring it, that's fabulous. Uh, make sure if you've got your t-shirt that you wear it because we have spent all our money that we've got <laughs> on a t-shirt and a hat. But we think these will show up well because we plan on being seen. <laughs> And I thank you for your support immensely. And I assure you again that Charles does bring someone with you. And let's do this right when we do it. Amen. 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 Uh, definitely, uh, definitely. Uh, just let me say this. I'm sure I, I don't have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, let's be mindful that this is a peaceful protest. Amen. 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 We want everybody that's going to come back. Amen. Amen. I don't mind you getting arrested for standing up for justice, but you get arrested because you do something foolish. Yeah. That's on you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So we want you to definitely remember this is a peaceful protest. We are peaceful people asking for a peaceful clemency to happen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Let us all stand.
Every head bow, every eye closed. God, I finally thank you. Thank you, God, for this day, God. God, we thank you so much, God, for this wonderful service, God. Well, God, you reminded us, God, that the time is now. God, we thank you so much, God, for the work that's already been done. God, we thank you so much, God, for Wanda, God, and her team, God, that's been working on this for the last two years. And God, we consider it our pleasure, God, to join in the fight with them to make sure to guarantee, God, that a work wrong is made right. God, we continue to pray, God, for Charles. God, continue to pray, God, for his health, his mind, and his spirit. That God, as he continues, God, to have hope, God, we shall continue to have hope. We shall continue to fight on his behalf. And lastly, God, we ask God for your safety. Yes, ask God that you can God, lead us, God, to rally God safely. God, you yeah. be with us there. They be in a safe uh, yeah. protest, a peaceful protest. But also, God, that you give us safety travel back home. Yes. And God, we can report, God, to our friends and our family, God, the good things that Lexington did in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yes. And now, God, we ask God that you bless us as we leave this place. God, we send the Holy Ghost ahead of us on home. We ask your blood and camp around us. Until next time we have the opportunity to gather together, we ask that you be with us. Now unto him that's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May he be glory in the church now and forevermore. And all God's children said, amen. 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 God bless you, brothers and sisters. I see y'all in Raleigh on Saturday. Thank you.